here's something Star Wars. You're like, what is this? And long ago, in a galaxy far, far away, Star Wars toys began. And Kenner continues the excitement. The Empire Strikes Back collection. El Regreso del Jedi. Welcome to the Star Wars Collector's Archive Podcast. It's the Kivecast. For that Star Space Station, the snap open space hatch. Sometimes known as the Vintage Pod. Wow, what a weird train! A monthly audio magazine dedicated to vintage Star Wars toys and memorabilia. Hosted by Sky Payne, Fudd, Chewbacca, and Steven B. Dem. B-Wing fighters and B-Wing pilot action. B-Wing pilot action. B-Wing pilot action. B-Wing pilot action. 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 Market data mined by Brisbane Brisbane Mike. Luke Skywalker handles his saber well. And Fantastic Pete. Boba Fett has a seat who held it. Tech support by The Lowe. Recorded live at Celebration Anaheim, it's the 61st Kivecast. In this episode, we catch up with a couple of first 12 focus collectors we missed the first time around, as Ross Barr talks Han Solo, and somebody finally talks about Obi-Wan Kenobi. It's David Carr. Plus, we have a live from the showroom floor market watch with Fantastic Pete himself, and Trevor the Tweeter Duder gives us some updates on all of our social media goings on. All this, plus some other nice guests on the 61st Vintage Pod. <laughs> wampa Wampa! Welcome yep. to Cavcast uh, 61. That's right, it's number 61. <laughs> we are recording in the beautiful collector stage. We are looking at the uh, Vader case project over there. Um, now, the thing about this, Steve, is this is an episode we're recording at Celebration, and this is like this super special room where everything is made perfectly just for us, except that there is no way to record the show. So please, des- <laughs> please describe how we are recording the show, Steve. So we've moved a table uh, next to the one speaker in the room and placed uh, our microphone as an input or recording input on top of a chair. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I'm going to go make sure it's recording, Steve. Okay. Uh, why don't you uh, give your, your impression? Uh, Idaho, sure. Sky here. Uh, some of this will not be recorded at Celebration Anaheim. So, well, we recorded most of this episode uh, live from the convention. I think, actually, there's enough to talk about that maybe I should kind of jump in and do some of my weird, uh, you know, voiceover stuff. I'm currently sitting in the Chuseum. It's quite nice. Uh, at my feet... There's all the swag from the party. I'm seeing Patches, Star Tots, uh, Matthias's book. Uh, I see the Archive Party card backs, some coloring books, a whole bunch of pins. Uh, it's basically like Celebration exploded in here. Um, so I'm just going to kind of jump in and add things from time to time. And uh, okay, so let's get back to the show. And when I come in, I don't know, I'll just say Heidi Ho each time like Kermit the Frog. Because, you know, I don't have enough stupid affectations. Oh, speaking of me being annoying, I, I wanted to officially apologize for the burps that started off uh, episode 60. Um, I usually edit those out, but I was listening and I kind of thought it was funny. And then I played it for my kids and they thought it was hilarious. But uh, it's, it's probably not good form to burp into people's ears. So there will be mm, no burps on this episode. I can guarantee that. Well, I am uh, still alive. Last night was a lot of fun. The archive party, I think, went okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I thought it went pretty well. I, I don't remember much, uh, but yeah. Well, I think, I think what, what we should do this. So the whole idea is that we want to catch up with focus collectors who we missed the first time. Right. Um, we missed Obi-Wan just for no reason at all. There was, there was no excuse. So for that, we have uh, David Carr. We missed Han Solo because I hate Han Solo. Um, but we, yeah, I'm sorry, Ross. So then we have Ross Barr. And then at some point, uh, we didn't, there's so many Yoda focus collectors, we didn't have a chance to talk to all of them. So we didn't get to uh, meet with uh, uh, Ross uh, Cuddy. So I realized all of our guests either have the name that rhymes with star or are Ross. So it's kind of funny. Um, anyway, so, so we're going to talk to them, but I also want to do general impressions of the show, kind right. of an impressionistic beginning. We're not going to have our normal features. Um, so one is, I only want to say one thing about the trailer, Steve. Okay. 
Okay, <laughs> so we watched, at least I watched it in the collector stage, and there's a huge screen and everything. But my favorite viewing of it was with Yehuda and the mysterious man known as Fluffy. <laughs> and they, they were watching it in a sun-baked little corner where we were eating, like, cheap cheeseburgers. <laughs> and they were watching it for the first time on Yehuda's phone. Okay, all right. And, and they left, and they were like, that was just great. That was so funny. <laughs> and then Yehuda quoted the last line from the trailer, and it was, Chewy. We're old. <laughs> and that's what he really thought it was instead of Chewy, we're home. Which I do think is a better line. Like, that's a lot of fun. Like, Chewy, we're old. Uh, uh, so that's my kind of my, my movie thought, I guess. Right. My movie trailer thought. Um, there's so much to say about the party. I don't think we should talk about it. Heidi ho. But uh, now that we don't have an hour time limit, and now that you're sitting safely at home, I think it is worth talking about the party. You know, I was going to call Steve and talk to him, but he's such a humble guy. I don't really want to go into it, but uh, it was a complete success. And I would say most of that is due to Steve. Um, other people helped. You know, I helped. Um, and other people helped. But really, Steve was just amazing. And I don't even think he posted it on our Facebook page yet. Um, oh, by the way, we just hit 500 likes. So, hey, if you listen to the show and you haven't liked us on Facebook, come on. Go, go like us. That way we know you're listening. Um, but do uh, you want to know how much he raised? How much, you know, this party, I shouldn't say he because the sponsors put in a lot of money and people who paid tickets paid a lot of money. He wound up raising over $10,000 for cats and dogs that uh, need shelter and help and homes. Um, so for the Best Friends Foundation. So that's pretty outstanding to raise that much. Just to give you a point of reference, um, the first archive party, we raised $3,000 for the manatee. Now, arguably, they need less money. I don't know. But it was just amazing. Um, should also give special uh, thanks to Bill Cable, who made the really awesome secret card back of Boba Mutt that was just for the sponsors. The sponsors got lots of cool swag. They got like a fake mock-up uh, card back proof of Nian Lives, um, which was my favorite of my card back jokes. Um, and they got this really beautiful, beautiful drawing, um, you know, like droid style drawing of Boba Fett, but as a dog. Um, Chris Jorgulius won the C-3PO assembling competition. Uh, it was <laughs> definitely a you snooze, you lose moment, you know, like uh, it, was, it was pretty cool um, that he managed to win that. There's so much. I mean, Yehuda was there and, and uh, you know, working on the pin the head, pin the shield on the head man. The Tweeter Duder was running the Atari 2600 station, which was just massive. Um, John Peck was doing the froggy thing. You know, I was so busy. I don't even know who was doing everything. You know, I know I was up there sort of running around, um, but we'll have to have like a more official uh, sort of thank you to everybody later. But that was just, just amazing. Um, and oh, my card backs, my weird Sky Coos raised over $350. So that was personally edifying for me um, because I didn't know if it was a good idea or not, and they wound up selling. And uh, Mark Enright's beautiful, you see, I'm doing it. See, I'm talking about enough people now that if I don't mention you, it's going to be insulting. So Mark Enright, I'm not going to talk about you because Steve and I are going to do an official archive party debriefing later. So that was just the beginning. So if I didn't mention you, it's just because you're on the first wave. And I definitely did not say Mark Enright's name. And I'm not even going to talk about the, the costume contest or the crazy awesome costume that I saw and the one that won, which was... See, you're going to have to wait. Um... But yeah, uh, and another sort of thing is I'm going to be talking about the poster that was made by Josh Blake and Dan Florida uh, in a second, and uh, that's just it's just a beautiful thing. Uh, it was really cool because they only gave it out at the archive party, and according to Josh and Dan, they tore up all the extras. So if you didn't get it there, you don't get it, and it's a beautiful tribute to Cincinnati, and it's a beautiful tribute to Kenner, and there's even I'm. Touch to say a tribute to me because if you look right underneath the Kenner sign, you'll see a little Chewbacca there. So I guess that's uh, well, I know that's a tribute to the thing on my site where I did a Kenner tour of Cincinnati a long time ago. Um, 
that they then did a way better version of uh, at kennercollector.com. So anyways, that's the first part of our uh, convention coverage. And now let's go back to my one thing that I talk about it in the show. Heidi Ho out. Uh, yeah, I think uh, that was if you're there. You, uh... <laughs> but, but I will say one moment that I caught, um, which was uh, the, des- the uh, designer of the poster, of the Kenner poster, uh-huh. right? So it was designed by uh, the, des- the uh, designer of the poster, of the Kenner poster. By, uh, Josh Blake. Right, designed yep. by Josh Blake and made by uh, uh-huh. Josh uh-huh. Blake and Dan Florida. Right. Um, and we were there, and there are two old employees of Kenner right, who were right. actually at the party. Uh, Hi, Ty Line, I think I'm saying his name wrong. Uh, and Jim Swearigan, and I'm pretty sure I'm saying his name wrong as well. <laughs> and so they were looking at this poster, which is a poster of the way that Cincinnati looked and all the things that happened in Kenner. And they're kind of laughing and smiling, and they're looking at it. And then, you know, Josh is like, I, I made that. <laughs> and Hi just goes, no, you didn't. <laughs> You didn't make this. Like, he couldn't believe it because really it was yeah. so cool. So I have pictures of it, of them pointing out things on the map in front of Josh, who actually made it. So it was this great moment where, you know, the artist got to see what he was, you know, what he'd actually portrayed. That's great. Yeah. Oh, Steve just took out I'm, the timer. I put the timer out. No Largan Gargan, guys. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, so maybe we'll, we'll save some of the impressions for later then. Sure, sure. Uh, I mean, I mean we, got, we got tomorrow, too. <laughs> yeah, okay. So why don't we bring up, uh, let's see, is... is, Ro- is we have one Ross. We, we have, have one Ross. Okay, let, let's, get, let's get it from the... Oh, and I forgot that Fantastic Pete and Tweeter Duder are here. <laughs> so this is the other thing. This is the most complete Kive cast we've ever had. Right. So we're missing Lobart, and we're missing Brisbane, Brisbane Mike. But beyond that, the sort of core of the show is here. In person. Yeah, with yeah. Trevor the Tweeter Duder and Fratastic Pete. Now, Steve, I haven't told you this. <laughs> I'm thinking about trying to help Pete change his name from Fratastic Pete. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was thinking of Market Pete. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That could stick. It, but nothing's working. But fantastic. It's going to be I think fantastic. It's, just, yep. it's it's settled. And, and you know, Trevor's <laughs> never liked Tweeter Duder. <laughs> Anyways, um, so we'll keep that. All right, good. So then, why don't we have a, a, a vote? Who wants to hear about Obi Wan? Who wants to hear about Han? So who's going to vote for Obi Wan? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and who's going to vote for Han? <laughs> All right, then we're going to invite up Ross Barr. <laughs> See, he's doing this to help himself later. He's got a little, you know, auto, audio cues. Yeah, I got, a, I got a glass of water. That's great. Thank yeah, you. thank you. You think we're going to edit this? We are not going to nope. edit this. <laughs> well, thanks for coming on, Ross. <laughs> thank you guys very much. Appreciate it. Yeah. So. Um, one of the reasons we wanted to have you on as well is that uh, Steve and I are kind of. At one point, we were new collectors, and now we feel like we're sort of like old dudes who are totally out of it. Mm-hmm. So, like, I don't really understand <laughs> Facebook. I'm like, I, who's a group? I don't, what's, I'm liking. Right, right. I don't know what this is. <laughs> and so, like, I started to get into it, and I started seeing your name kind of all over the place and seeing you kind of, and I realized if it was five years ago or ten years ago, you know, you'd be all over Rebel Scum, and I'd be seeing you all over the place. So I made sure. a concerted effort to be like, who is a more of the Facebook generation guy that we could get in contact? Steve, have I just insulted him? I hope not. <laughs> ah, okay. Okay. Good. You're making me feel young, even though I'm probably older than you. Guys. I don't know. Hi, de ho, Sky here. Um, this actually does get to something that's been bugging me, and Steve and I are going to be talking about it soon. But there is a pretty heavy divide that uh, that is seen in the collecting community, and a lot of it is based on technology. And basically, what I see is a lot of older collectors, myself included having an immense amount of frustration with the way things have changed. And I think that that frustration has been taken out on people who are sort of a part of this change. Obviously not responsible for it, but just kind of part of it. Um, While I was at the convention, I heard someone actually, an older collector, refer to people who are on Facebook groups as groupies. And I, I laughed and I thought that was really funny. Um, But then I realized, like, well, you know, I'm sure people called me a scummer when I started on Rebel Scum because it was sort of as, well, it was a little bit after, um, I guess a little, a good deal after the uh, news groups had been defunct, you know, and I sort of showed up and I had a lot of confidence and I thought that I knew everything. 
Oh, wait, that hasn't really changed. But, you know, I'd spent a lot less time in the hobby, and I was sort of, I'm sure I rubbed people the wrong way. I know I rubbed people the wrong way because they've told me. And um, it was kind of like a, a block, and I remember feeling kind of alienated and, and frustrated. Now I put in the time, and I got over it, and I'm sure all these, quote, groupies, if they put in the time, they'll get over it. Um, but I, I don't know. I, I think it's it's something that we need to think about um, as far as collectors go because... Um, the conversation is moving and some of the conversation will happen on this podcast, but most of it will happen on Facebook, at least for the next couple of years until the next thing shows up. And, uh, we here at the Kivecast Vintage Pod want to include everybody. So if you're a groupie, then come hang out with us. Um, and I think Ross Barr is in many ways kind of the king of the groupies. He's you know, uh, I know he posts on Rebel Scum as well, but he does so much stuff with Facebook um, that I think that's sort of why we ended up choosing him to sort of represent this new generation. Um, also, it should be noted for those of you who don't understand the grammar, U grading is when a grading company takes a figure off of a card back and says that it is uncirculated and uh, therefore more valuable. So this has caused a huge scandal in the grading community in the in the collecting community because people are destroying card backs in order to have a third party essentially put a toy in something and say that no one's ever touched it when of course the people at the factory touched it and there's no such thing as an uncirculated toy it went on the shelves it's just the actual piece of plastic itself was never taken off the bubble etc so when we talk about his crusade against you grading that's what that means um and then he also talks about repros, which are just reproduction weapons, which have plagued the community for a long time. And he's been spearheading this, this attempt to go against you grading and repros. And I'm such like an old fuddy-duddy that I'm like getting tired of seeing all these banners everywhere and everyone saying how much they hate it. I started off the show being like, I don't care about you grades anymore. But that's not true. I do care. And I think it's good that we fight against it as a... Uh, as a community. Look at me being all, you know, uh, lovey-dovey. Maybe it's Steve that makes me so so bristly all the time. I don't think so. I think it's just I'm in my, I'm in my collection room. I'm a happy man. Anyway, so let's get back to the interview with Ross Barr, who probably will not like being called King of the Groupies, but maybe he does. As we'll hear later, he does have something of a ribald sense of humor. So uh, let's, well, uh, okay. let's I get to Ross. Yet. So why would you choose... Why would you choose Han Solo? Well, because he's so handsome. Okay. Very <laughs> handsome man. <laughs> no, I mean, he's, he's a character that always kind of spoke to me, and I think the story of his kind of redemption in the original trilogy from kind of a selfish bad guy to uh, someone that... Uh, oh, a little closer. Sorry about that. Uh, to someone who ultimately becomes one of the heroes helping defeat the Empire was pretty cool. And, uh, he was kind of a ladies' man, which I never was, so that helps too. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's funny with Han because, um, actually, interesting enough, one of we actually should have had Todd Hudson on here because he wasn't on the Chewbacca one that we did. Uh, he was one of the big Chewbacca collectors, and when we asked him, when I asked him why do you collect Chewbacca, he was like, "Well, I wanted to collect Han, but it was just too popular." And it's actually funny. The opposite is true. Yep. Like very few people collect Han. Have you experienced? There's not a lot of. There's of not. Resistance? There's not. No, which is which is good. So there's not a lot of competition. I know that. Phidias has a decent amount of, of Han stuff, but you know, for a major character like that to have not a lot of competition is cool. So don't collect Han. No one collects <laughs> yeah. Han. And it's just the, the original Han, first the first twelve Han. I do uh, for carded stuff. Okay. I can just go try to focus on original Han, but you know, I also have a pre-production run as well, and focusing just on original Han would be very frustrating. <laughs> so I've kind of expanded it out a little bit, which is nice with a character like that. You get the Bespin and Han Hoth and trench coat, and there's probably 15 other different Han variations I'm not <laughs> right. mentioning right now. But yeah, it, it's it's funny because there have been some Han guys who sort of show up and do it a little bit, and then kind of back out. At least as far as I've seen it. Um, so then, one of the questions I like to ask of focus collectors is. So are you trying to like put together like a, a whole kind of domestic run of all the card yeah, cards? Yeah. Is, is there one that we wouldn't know is kind of hard to find that's kind of fun and interestingly uh, like, uh, I mean, I'll, actually more people may know this, but the uh, 31 back Empire Smallhead mm -hmm. is actually one of the rarest production figures out there. There's, I think, about 15 or so that are out there. I have one kind of a low condition, but 
Yeah, so that's that when I when I got that a couple of years ago and had a few other pieces, that's where I was like, oh, I got this. Let's keep going. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> keep going. Okay, so it's so it's an empire, so it's a offerless carded 31 back. 31 back. Yeah. Small head. With small the small head. head. Right. right. Which because is uh, the the small heads actually do, to my knowledge doesn't appear on the 20 or 21. So right. the theory is that there was some overstock left. They put on the Empire cards for some reason and some still, still exist. So there's no small head 21 back? Not to my knowledge. I don't believe so. I haven't wow. seen one. All right. Well, in the event that you think that Ross is wrong, email us at gmail.com. <laughs> or I don't know, Ross, what are we supposed to do now? Like Instagram or something? Or? <laughs> you can I find me on MySpace. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, yeah, inst Instantgram. That's what I want to call it. <laughs> well, once you're a dad, you get to just say whatever you want about anything. <laughs> Uh, you get to sound cool. Yeah, I also have these little notes here from the Hilton. I just have a whole bunch of stuff written down here. Um, I did want to say, you know, there's um, a little bit of vintage exploitation, which you like to talk about. Yep. And have you seen that Tops? Have you been by the Tops booth today yet? I haven't yet. Okay, no. so Tops is releasing these vintage style cards, but of just one character. Oh, so it's cool. Neat. So this is all. So I'm gonna open this up on stage in front of everybody. It's only ten bucks. <laughs> so it's pretty cool. So the Han one is for sale right now down there. And it's just neat because oh, the, so you have a yeah. whole set of okay. Yep. So they're large. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> so this is the Endor photo, and it says "Portrait of Chewbacca." This is. <laughs> I'm very happy I opened this up. Um, and I, oh yeah, okay. I can talk about that later. But anyways, <laughs> uh, have you guys seen any other vintage exploitation out there? Uh, I'd say I guess the the General Giant stuff still going nuts. Um, Mark Huber actually just brought into the California booth a uh, General Giant. Jumbo Droids 3PO, which comes with a coin, which I, I, I've completely lost track of those things, but it was just one of the coolest things I've seen. It was, I guess it's an exclusive for, for Celebration. So, wow. Yeah. And, and they must have made a small head and big head Han. Did they? Uh, which one? The, 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 the Jumbo? I think so. I believe so. I don't, yeah. yeah, I don't have those yet. <laughs> it's, I find it hard. To, what do they charge? 300 bucks for those? I think, yeah, I think they're like 100 bucks. God, it hurts me yeah. to pay that for something modern. <laughs> it hurts oh, me. Okay, so then... So then the small head was what they started off with, and then they went with the big head. Big head, that's right. Okay, uh, because the big head is better, yes or no? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I like the small head. I nope, guess. wrong. Uh, yeah. No, no, no I'm sorry, 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 Sky. I'm large heads. Damn. <laughs> I'm siding with, with Ross. Okay, okay, let's get it. Should I leave now? <laughs> who, leave, who prefers <laughs> this? Okay, who, boo. Who, <laughs> which, which, who admits that they're not intelligent or nice people and prefers <laughs> the small head? So Who is brilliant, handsome, head. and or pretty, and prefers the large head? Uh, All right, well, you're at least the loudest. That's good. <laughs> oh, good uh, stuff. Cool. So then, um, how about at, the, at this convention? Have you found anything for your focus at this convention yet? I have not. It's been very frustrating. Um, I'm, hopefully, someone's going to show up and wow me at the room sales tonight. But no, I, haven't, I actually haven't bought anything here. Really? Other not than a single food thing? and booze. <laughs> I bought a lot of that. I bought a lot of that. <laughs> So I was listening to one of our competitor podcasts, the Star Wars Forum UK podcast. Wait, that's the non-insulting way of calling them. Good. Um, <laughs> we're, we're friends now. And you're also like the big Mr. No You Grade dude. I guess. So, I guess, so yeah. why don't you, seeing as you're Mr. Facebook and, uh, you know, snapper chatter, whatever, <laughs> why, why don't you talk a little bit about that uh, before well, we get a, to the lightning round? Yeah, it was, it was kind of a, a grassroots movement. Some of the, the admins of different groups in Facebook decided to... You know, we all kind of bounded by most people that are vintage collectors don't like re repros, and U grades are pretty harmful to the hobby as well. So a lot of the admins of different groups decided to put the, I don't know if everyone's seen the, the repro sign that I think Matthias or someone, yeah, one Matthias, of the Swedish guys yeah. put together. Um, we designed a anti-U grade sign, which is right, kind of like right. the U-turn sign with a cross through it on a, on a road sign. And so we, a lot of the admins of their groups decided to put those um, in, on the sides of whatever specific picture they had for their group. So a lot of the Facebook groups all kind of united around that, and it, it kind of kicked off. The SWF UK forum put that, those badges on their site. Right. I believe that the Imperial Gunnery did it as well. Cool. Um, some other sites that I'm probably forgetting right now yeah. did. So it, it was really, you know, again, kind of a grassroots movement, and people all kind of banded together, and um, I've had probably more U-grade discussions over the last month and a half that I care to have. But, <laughs> you know, it, it was, I think it was helpful on Facebook, unlike Rebel Scum, where 
most of the collectors get it and aren't into that stuff on Facebook. You got a lot of newer collectors and people that don't know, don't even know what a U grade is. Right. So, right. right. Yeah. That, that's a, that's a good point. This kind of age divide that I'm trying to fabricate. That they, well, I'm not trying to fabricate it because it exists, but the idea that maybe a lot of people don't quite know that. Yeah. So right. it was good. And people learned and. No, we'll move on. And you right, guys no, showed no, up no. In, uh, in chain mail, I think, last night at the archive party. Yeah. <laughs> it took me a second to realize what was going on. It was you and Jason Smith, right? Yes, yes. We, yeah. were, we were dressed as knights on a crusade against repros and U-grade. So. <laughs> the U-grade crusade. That's right, that's right, that's right. I, I just want to say one thing about the magic of the show. So you guys didn't hear it, but I said, I don't know what I'm going to do, and I flailed out, and I'm going to leave this part in. Steve just jumps right in. Yep, that's the place to find them in, in, the, in the room sales, and that's going to be a perfect cut for me. <laughs> I'm just going to cut out. It's just the man's mad. Let's get a round of applause for Silent but Danley. Right. I can just provide like little bits of yeah. time while you can think of the next thing that yeah. I feel like I've done yeah, my there job. You go. Okay, well then are you ready for the Soviet lightning round, Ross? <laughs> I guess no. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Okay, we've got to have it anyways. I've, I've, I've streamlined it. Okay. Okay, so in the event that you are... Wait, but you don't live in Canada because not everyone who's named Ross lives in Canada. No. Where, where do you live? Ohio. It's Ohio. The, the Canada of the U.S. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's an awfully nice thing to say about Ohio. Um, okay, so in the event that you're in Ohio and your house starts burning to the ground or your condominium or uh, your cabana, uh, what is the one item that you grab, grab before leaving? Does it have to be a Hana item? No. See, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get into your Obi-Wan focus. Probably my Mushroom Tip DT Obi-Wan. Okay. That's probably the first, the, just because of the history of it, and it's a cool piece. So after that, maybe my photo sample Han. I like that piece too. So you'd let, you'd let that, that small headed 31, so basically you're saying a small head, <laughs> eh, it's cool, but it's not that cool. I'm cheating on Han, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I guess so. <laughs> All right. Um, and do you have a sort of grail item that you're looking for? Now, I think, Steve, we should start doing two things. Grail, never going to get it, and grail, I'm really looking for it. Yeah, I think so, we do like, what's your grail, probably never going to get it, and what's your grail, I'm still looking for I think it. they're, well, I, I, I hate to say that there's something I'm never going to get, but probably an unpainted first shot. Okay. Uh, Han still, small head, small head, and probably a 12 back proof. Okay. okay. So that one I uh, may get. Those are attainable. Yeah, I think the 12-back proof I may get, but I may have to give a kidney to get it. But <laughs> right. We'll see. Heidi ho So actually, uh, one of the great things about Celebration Anaheim in Los Angeles uh, was that you were able to pick up Matthias's book, A New Proof, Kenner Star Wars Packaging Design. And I happened to be looking through it while I was editing this episode, and uh, it may be harder... Then Ross thinks to get a 12-back Han Solo proof because they have not surfaced on a regular 12-back proof card. It only exists uh, as a chromalin and as a one-sided blank-back proof and as a production-like proof card. Uh, if you don't know what all those terms mean, uh, listen to the Kivecast, but also uh, go to Matthias' uh, website, dearpublications.com, and uh, go check that out. That's dear, like... Uh, you know, like dear John, dude. All right, awesome. Uh, and of course, mm -hmm. the most important question: If you were a item of vintage, an item, an item of vintage Star Wars memorabilia, which one would you be? And this isn't like necessarily who you'd like to be, but mm -hmm. who you actually feel you are as a human being, <laughs> as a vintage. Who item. am I as a vintage? Jeez. You gotta dig deep. Yeah, you gotta dig deep. Is there a <laughs> clock somewhere that's ticking? As a, yeah, I feel it, like it, I hear like the Jeopardy music going on. You know what we'll do? That. We'll let you think about that, and then we'll do a lightning round and have everyone answer that question. That's, at the end. I think that's, that's very, very fair. All right, Thank so you. everyone Thank give you. a big round of applause for yeah, Ross Boss. The greatest, yeah. even though it's Han Collector. <laughs> and I got a lot of stuff sometime I'll send you away, because usually when I get Han stuff, I just throw it in the trash. But I'll put it, I'll put it aside. <laughs> It's like, oh, great, another Han thing, Chuck. Um, <laughs> Do you cut the Chewbacca's off the double things ever? Yes, yeah, sometimes I'll like get two and I'll cut them in half and I'll just put the two Chewbacca's together like they're supposed to be there. Uh, yeah, no, it's good. I like Han, obviously. He's, he's cool. You know, I was thinking, actually, um, so we watched the, uh, Yehuda and I went to the David Collins. He's the guy who does the, uh, uh, the Galaxy Williams, music. Right? Yeah. Um, they don't call it Galaxy music. Star Wars no. Oxygen. And uh, so he did the... the putting the old music back together right. with uh, the scenes, which yeah. you guys would love as, as film, film archivists. And just the way Han says, take it easy, after the kiss, when Leia kisses him, is like the best <laughs> acting in the whole trilogy. <laughs> it's like, 
take it easy. Like that's <laughs> that line and sorry for the mess. I got to admit that those are two cool things that Han says. <laughs> that and Chewy, we're old. <laughs> okay. Well, um, Steve, it has been. Oh, do you want to say something? No, no, no. You look like you have something to say. <laughs> do you? I was going to say, who's, uh, who's next? <laughs> well, who's next? So when we started this whole thing of doing a, a character of the month, we, for some reason, to just when we got to Obi-Wan, we just wound up not talking about him. And Obi-Wan has been this kind of running joke where we've just decided to never talk about Obi-Wan. <laughs> now, we'll talk about the Death Star droid for 45 minutes. Yep. We'll talk about Hammerhead for three... I, think I mean, the Ugnaught, we talked for like four that, hours just about the Ugnaught. That's without the poetry slam. See, I think by the time we get to Rancor Keeper, it'll have to be three episodes per... Yeah, just, per, just, just break it up. Yeah. <laughs> but Obi-Wan, who Steve used to be a focus Yeah, that was my of, first focus, yeah. Uh, is here, but unfortunately, we're out of time. <laughs> so we'll have to come back now. Um, and also, I did want to say one thing, too. If you're actually sitting here, this means that you get to have a vintage pod fridge magnet. So just letting you know that we're going to be handing those out later. In addition to the buttons, but everyone has buttons. And also you get these stickers, and I'm going to complain about these stickers in a second. <laughs> uh, just throwing that in there to mix things up. So I'd like to welcome uh, David Carr to the podcast. Uh, uh, dun, right. dun, dun, dun. Oh, Thank, you. Right there. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, so you're, you're local here, right? I am. I am in, here in Orange. I'm 20 minutes away. So. All right, cool. Yeah. And you, you have a beard? I do have a beard. <laughs> is, it, yes. is it because of Obi-Wan? No, but uh, it, people say I kind of look like Obi-Wan, so <laughs> I, you know, maybe you, you take the look of your character. I don't know. Have he you heard certainly of did for a long time. I, I, I did. It's funny because, <laughs> you know, um, if you go to a, a dannysfund.org, you'll see the video where I cut off my hair for charity. That's dannysfund.org. I can never say it just once. And so, you know, I used to really have the long hair and the beard, and that's how all the collectors knew me. And so all people who I've known for 15 years walk up to me and be like, hi. I'm like, hi. And then I sit down and go, oh, I didn't see with the uh -huh. face and the hair. And, uh, uh, yeah. So, yeah, I, don't, I no longer try and look like him. I now, I just try to look like Matthias now. That's yeah, I think you're, you're on that path, yeah. Wait, I'm on time. wait, 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 wait. I'm all ready for this. I just try to look like Matthias. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that came through the mics? Okay, good. Um, so, Obi-Wan Kenobi, why do you collect... Now, this one makes sense to me. I know why someone would collect Obi-Wan, but why do you collect Obi-Wan, David? That's a good question. I think I kind of followed through after a while. I just like the character because it's a, it a flawed character, right? He's a guy that, you know... I, 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 before I even saw the, the, the prequels and things, obviously, then there's a story with you in there. But I think he just as a, as a character, he was really intriguing to me. Um, <laughs> and, and the fact that he, you know... He had this flaw, and he, he also, like we talked about Han being kind of redeemed in a different way, uh, you know, and so I really just, just it, 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 I really was attracted to the character. And, and of course, and Alec Guinness being a great actor, I mean. Right. Geez. So then, um, also, can you like make, move it closer? Yeah, is his mic loud enough? Is that better? Does he sound loud enough to everybody? Is that, is that okay? Okay. Right. Yes, okay, is it just there me? Go. Okay, good. All right. <laughs> I have trouble hearing when other people talk. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Steve, mm -hmm. you used to be an Obi-Wan collector. I did, yeah. Why did you stop? Um, basically because I realized there was way too much. I had yeah. started doing a, a carded run, and I got through, uh, I think I had a couple of each card, and I realized I was running out of room, for one, and then I was also running out of money. This is back when you could, you could do this a lot easier. So David, what you've... I've been to his collection and seen it. Uh, it was probably about a year or two ago. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it, it kind of brought back memories for me. I mean, I, I collected it because I, I liked Obi-Wan as a character, but uh, I realized it was just going to be overwhelming. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, I, I went for something that yeah. no one cares about and doesn't have that much. <laughs> <laughs> it's much easier. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so I guess the, the same... I, I like kind of having similar questions to everybody, right? Yeah. yeah. I think I, I've been messing around with the sound, and now it's going... <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to stop that. So I hope it doesn't distract you. Answer, what is a surprisingly rare item for an Obi-Wan collector? Uh, well, I think the del double telescoping uh, Kenobi is certainly one. Uh, I don't actually have one. That would be one you talked earlier about a, a, a grail type. And yeah. I was talking to a collector last night who has an uh, actual carded double oh, wow. telescoping okay. later, which... You know, he he had and had you know would love people have thrown money and things at him and doesn't want to give that up and I don't blame him. That would be an awesome piece to right. to have, you know. 
But is there anything like more obscure that like, I mean, have you been trying to put together sort of like a run of all the figures? Yeah. Uh, but like, yeah. as an example, I found uh, the 41 back with the uh, survival kit offer mm -hmm. to actually be kind of hard to find for Chewie. And it's not like it's wicked rare, but it's just kind of fun when you really focus on something. And Steve, I imagine a 70, actually all B-wing pilots are easy to find. There, there is, uh, <laughs> each booth usually has about five or so yeah. all together. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, it's hard to find one that hasn't been on the pegs for at least three years. Yes. Um, so I was just wondering if there was one like that where it's kind of like, oh, this one's kind of hasn't popped up. You know, um, the uh, the offerless Empire Strikes Back ones are kind of hard to come across. I remember huh. that one being the one I, I never got. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's exactly the kind of thing yeah. I'm thinking. So an yeah. offerless Empire Strikes Back Obi right. one is hard to find, and that card back gets kind of messed up with the because it's so cool the way he's. Yeah. To me, it looks. It reminds me of. Uh, the art for the inflatable lightsaber. Yes, you know, it has it's the same, yellow. The same oh, look. yeah. Yeah. So they're, they're kind of, there's some synergy there. Yeah. <laughs> and surprisingly, the other one, which, you know, you would think that a Return of the Jedi 48 back would be easier to find, mm -hmm. but that also is one of the ones that I just, you would think it'd be more common, mm -hmm. but it's just not as common. You get to the 65 and the 77 right. backs, but the 48 are our hard ones to find. Yeah. Well, actually, we haven't even talked about that, Steve, have we, on the show, I don't think. Not, I don't think so. <laughs> well, we're eventually going to get to 48 backs. Yeah. You know, with me being the master of the 48 Bs, of course. <laughs> with with um, uh, one? I still have one. Okay. I saw one down on the floor. I'm probably not going to buy it, but I saw another one, so I might eventually be the king of the 48 Bs, okay. after all. Um, but yeah, the, the Return of the Jedi 48 backs, they, they used to be really prized after. I remember, you know, maybe 10 years ago, people would really go crazy over them because they were made in shorter quantities. Um, if anyone knows why they were made in shorter quantities? Okay, so Fantastic Pete, or Market Pete, <laughs> it turns out he knows more than just what something costs on eBay. <laughs> Let's give a round of applause for Market yeah. Pete. <laughs> I'm starting to like Market Pete, Steve. It's got a <laughs> ring to it. So anyways, uh, he was just saying that it was just a quick transition into the, uh, into the Return of the Jedi figures, because they'd put out so many different versions of 48 packs anyways, <laughs> that they, they hadn't quite done it. Awesome, Steve. I'm, I'm doing well with time, right? You're doing really well. Yeah. So the amazing thing like about 18th century <laughs> philosophy, like oh, the transition no, from 17th into 18th is... Uh, Gargan. How do you pronounce car? Is it car? Is it car? Is it... Okay. Um, actually, Steve, was, I we was talking to, uh, to Yehuda about our show, and I was thinking we should make like a, a, a prank t-shirt. <laughs> the Star Wars Collector's Archive podcast, 70% pronunciation. 20% the health of our dogs, 10% vintage Star Wars. That's about right, yeah. <laughs> That's about the right thing. Yes, thank you. Um, and fantasy baseball, yes. Thank you, Tommy. Yes, and fantasy baseball. So. And do you feel it's a really competitive figure? Do you feel like you're always going up against other, other Obi-Wan guys pretty, that we're also I missing? Pretty consi I think uh, at least uh, I, there's... I've been running into a lot of K Kenobi focus collectors. Um, I'm sure there are more out there. Um, I think sometimes I'm competing with other people that are looking for not necessarily K Kenobi focus particular, but they're right, looking for maybe a particular run of 12 backs. And so those people that are that trying to get piece. that one yeah. piece yep. because he's through so many different things. Or if you want an Empire run, and that's a figure mm -hmm. that you need for that run. So that was, I think, what makes it more difficult. You're not necessarily going against a specific focused collector, but right. somebody that wants to put a set, and he's going to be in any one of those mm -hmm. runs that you're yeah. trying to put together. Yeah, that's so. the 12 back blues. Yeah. Hey, we should actually, we should say that. Like, for 12 back focus collectors, you probably know this too, no matter what you go for, there's always somebody who's also trying to go for something with that character. Yep. So, like, you, you get all this desire for something, and there's someone else who's like, oh, I just collect you know, 48 Bs, and so they <laughs> outbid you on that, or whatever it is, like, there's so many times where, it's kind of like when you get, when you're, like, driving home, no, when you're, like, just driving, and you get stuck in traffic for an event that you're not going to, yes. <laughs> and you just want to tell them, like, no, 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 I should, I'm not going to the football game, I should not be in this traffic, let me just go by, you enjoy your game, you know, you're like, I don't, yeah. I, this bidding war is not for me, this is my character, I should, anyways. <laughs> Okay, David, then are you ready for the Soviet lightning round? All right, let's do this. So be it. Okay, if the Emperor and old Obi-Wan Kenobi had a fight, who would win and why? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Wow. On the spot. Yeah, I just Jeez. came up with that right now. That's why I get the no bucks. <laughs> oh, 
yeah, well, I think, I, I guess it, it depends on what era you're talking about. Vin I'm Vin talking super old. I'm saying, like, he's going to go, on the thing. Well, and, <laughs> and the emperor's like, ah, I knew you were here. I got to go, go with my Obi-Wan Kenobi, you know. Think so? He's going to do, he's going to do, take down the emperor, I think, you know. What do you guys think? I have to... Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it'd just be a little lot of head nodding out there. Oh my! I bet they're. That's how that would go. <laughs> okay, that wasn't a real question. Um, so, in the event that the emperor came to your house here in Orange County and force lightning your foundation, can things? Can you lightning something on fire? You can, right? Sure. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sky yes. pain. <laughs> Master scientist. <laughs> um, That's how forest fires start, man. Right, so the moon is made out of cheese, right? The sun is made out of rock. Okay. Uh, so if that house were to have some kind of... <laughs> I elaborate on this, Steve. If Steve were to burn down your house, what would be the one item you would take out? Uh, uh, so I got a moment to think here. You guys are asking Ross here. I still do have my original Kenobi from when I was a kid. Um, but honestly, what I'm thinking about... It's not in the off, not not uh, not on my Kenobi focus, but I actually have a blue snaggletooth figure that I had from as a kid that my popped the head off. That my grandfather actually built a little wooden dowel. I think I showed. I, it yeah, I have a picture of this thing. It's awesome. Put a wooden dowel, so put it back in his head, so I could fit it back into the figure. I still have that figure as a kid. Wow. And I remember getting that blue snaggletooth and remember thinking myself, is this an actual real Star Wars figure? Because I, I remember as a kid, I'm like, is, is this, you know, where did this come from? Did somebody just give me a knockoff figure, you know, when you were yeah. a little kid? Here's something Star Wars. You're like, what is this? Is this Star Wars? Oh, that's you know? awesome. So it, it, that yeah. would probably be the one thing I would oh, take. That's, that's great. Yeah. I got a picture of that when we, when we actually do yeah. the show notes. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, we got to <laughs> upload that for the... Well, yeah. I can't tell if anyone gets the enhanced thing anymore. I don't know if it always goes out. Sometimes I get emails like, why isn't it enhanced? I'm like, I spent five hours enhancing it. So I don't know who's getting it or not. They're all enhanced. Maybe it's just your phone. I don't know. Um, that's, uh, okay. Then what is your uh, Obi-Wan, Obi-Grail? Um, goodness. I, you know, one that I would love to attain, I guess, and like I said earlier, is as a loose, loose, just a loose uh, double telescoping figure would be really cool. The one that you oh, we can like get that there. for David, right? Come on, yeah. well, you guys just got one out there. Shake yeah. it up, <laughs> anybody? Tessa? No? Okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right. Um, but like I said, too, I think a carded version would be really cool. I mean, that's just an, you know, it's such a cool figure, and I think uh, the whole del the tel double telescoping figures just in themselves. There's such a neat story to them. Right. Yeah. And I think Ross, you know, you talked about the uh, mushroom tip one, and just that that that's a neat part of the hobby, uh, early part of the whole collecting um, uh, realm. So I, I think it's a really yeah. You know, that was actually one of my favorite celebration memories. It was at Celebration Three, and it was sort of. It wasn't quite a room sale, but it was kind of like a bunch of sweaty dudes in a room making too much noise, yep. which we'll get into last night, too. Um, <laughs> but, like, we were there, and a collector who is, I believe, in this room, but I don't want to say in case he doesn't want to publicize it, but was carrying around this Obi-Wan, and he was, like, showing it to everybody and, like, having this evil, happy grin on his face. And I was, like, just starting. I didn't really know anybody. And I looked at it, and I was like, oh, it's a carded double telescoping lightsaber. And it was just so cool because he, like, had – it was almost like in an overcoat. Did he have a, he yeah, couldn't have been wearing an pocket. overcoat. <laughs> but it was this kind of thing, like, check this out. And I remember thinking, like, this is so cool. This is why you got to come to the conventions is to, like, hang out and just see this weird thing. And I don't actually see him in the room. But if that was you uh, – no, you're not here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you did just give me a button. Okay. There you go. Um, uh, all right, then. I guess since Ross is not here, we okay. will just... Uh, do you... Wait, uh, wait, wait. Oh, yeah, no, go ahead. I was no. say, the, the, what would you be? That was... Yes. Okay. Okay. I, have you been thinking now, Ross? Okay. So then we will ask, are you ready to answer the, the, this existential oh, question? Goodness. Okay, yeah. I'll, so I'll if see. you were a Star Wars vintage item... Not what would you like to be, not what do you aspire to be, but what would you actually be as a human being, as an item? Oh, my goodness. I'll give you some great examples. One time someone said they would be a rebel transport because they feel empty inside. <laughs> That's my favorite. Go back and listen to Konichi Wampa, episode number four. Oh, man. I got, that was that long ago. That was that wow. long ago. Okay. Yep. I've never been more sh shell-shocked than an answer. <laughs> I was just like... I don't know whether to hug you, give you, pay you some therapy. I don't know what. This is an amazing answer. I feel empty inside. <laughs> so, and then Steve just said a B-Wing pilot back in episode that one. the first one. So. When Steve was the temporary co-host. <laughs> I was, like, for a good, like, two years, I think. Yeah, probationary <laughs> basis. Yeah. Contract. 
<laughs> okay, so are you ready to answer all that right, question? All right, I just, this, this first thing that came to my mind here, and it's not because you like Chewbacca, but I just thought of the bandolier strap. Okay. Bandolier strap because it's something that you can wear, you can bring clo close to yourself, you can carry all your buddies with you. you know? Wow. Uh -huh. you know? So, so yeah. you're a very social person, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, uh, exactly. You're here with your family too, I'm, right? Yesterday we are here celebrating my son's sixth birthday, his awesome. very first convention. No oh, man. Yeah, so your got son got to come here for his birthday? First, first, first oh. his, first, his sixth birthday, got to have uh, his first convention, so he wow. really loved it. it was that's awesome. cool. You see, that's yeah. why I like asking this question, because like, I feel like I know you better because you answered that that way. Oh, yeah. And you know, it's kind of neat. This is the, uh, I, I got to get this in too, because I'm trying to leave the house today. He's like, Dad, Dad, because I have my Star Wars room. He's like, get me the the, the uh, Boba Fett slave one out, so I get my vintage slave out. They, get, they go out to the garage. We have fun looking at the old vintage stuff, and so it's it's definitely in the jeans with the kids now. So it's fun. Awesome, cool. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Okay, so now this is going to be Ross's turn. So come on up. And I'm also going to say, in the event that you haven't been on the show and answered this question, if you want to come up and answer this question, come up, introduce yourself, and tell me what vintage item of Star Wars memorabilia would you be. After that, we'll get a tweeter duda report, and then finally, the fantastic market watch. Uh, so we're now going to have Ross answer. We're doing well on time, Steve. I am on yeah, fire. You're good. You're good. All right. <laughs> so it's, it's, raw. It's, like, it's like Ross. It's like Ross. Like, uh, like, just Ross? So, the answer, so I have to answer the question. Yes. Now. Okay, so now answer the question. If you were a piece of Star Wars vintage memorabilia, what would you be? I would be a 12 inch figure. Any of them? Is, now, this is a PG 13 show, so I should probably not tell you why I've chosen that <laughs> okay. one. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, I'm going to leave it at that. Okay. Would anyone else like to answer this existential question? All right, come on up. So we have uh, Jawa collector extraordinaire uh, Jason West here to answer the question. If he were a piece of vintage Star Wars memorabilia, which one would he be? Uh, my initial answer was actually the Droid Factory from my initial interview, but oh, actually, yes. I've actually changed my mind. Oh boy. Okay. I, uh, truthfully, I like the Rebel Transport. <laughs> really? I think that because uh, similar to what David mentioned about the bandolier, you can put a whole bunch of toys in there and just kind of carry it around. And that was probably one of the few vehicles I begged my parents for and never received. Because I could just, you can open it up, you can stuff all your, you know, your figures, your weapons, and just cart around and go to a friend's place and just play all day and hopefully bring back the same figures. Yeah. Maybe dismembered. <laughs> uh, but I think if I was going to choose one, that would definitely be it. So oh, you're, so you're a transport half full kind of guy, not yeah, exactly. like empty, <laughs> emptiness. I mean, that is actually, okay, it, here we go, see. Yeah. That is essentially our existential state. Yeah. You know, we have like the same item and you can see it as I'm together, I'm connected to people, or you can see it as emptiness <laughs> and like a place where there should be something and there's just a lack. It's actually like in between being and nothingness is, is the... Is the is the Rebel Transport. <laughs> so well, like now it's yeah, officially like a Kive cast. Yeah, right. And there's lots of water that I spilled on the table and all the electrical, so this could be the final podcast, too. <laughs> all right. <laughs> dun, 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 Thanks, dun, Jason. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> all right, so anyone else want to come up and answer the existential Star Wars question? Uh, no one else? You have ever answered this question, twice. Yehuda? Okay, so we're going to have uh, Yehuda Kleinman. Uh, we're old, Chewy. I told that story. You weren't here. Uh, so, Yehuda, if you were a Star Wars memorabilia item, which one would you be? And please talk into the microphone. Don't hang back like a cool guy. He's like sitting back like, huh? I'm over here. All right, let's talk, Yehuda. Closer. Closer. <laughs> I have to like, put this thing in my mouth. Yeah, yeah um, basically. Well, you know, it's, it's a tough one, and uh, I didn't think about it. <laughs> okay. Da, da, da. <laughs> I think I would be like a rebel, a rebel soldier. Okay. Probably, probably because you know you're sort of in the fight, but you're not the guy who's like a, you know the general in charge of it, and you just sort of get to hang out with your friends. It's very similar celebration. You know? All right. And I'm getting this kind of good sense here of kind of sharing around. Now, do you also feel that you would be a person who could distribute magnets? I, I am. All right. Well, Yehuda's going to be distributing I am, magnets. I am that type of guy. <laughs> All right. Da, here you go. Da, 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 da. Okay, let's get Trevor the Tweeter Duder up here to discuss. I don't actually know what he's going to discuss. <laughs> but it's just so cool. We get to have the live crew. We get it's to have our, our live crew here. Thank you. So, 
Should we, ch I mean, we should keep the name as Tweeter Duder, but are you sort of in charge of all, s do we have an Instagram account? We do not have an Instagram account. <laughs> Can you uh, sign us up on Instagram? Speaking of, speaking of nicknames, yes. let me propose a nickname here. Okay. Peter Duder. <laughs> Peter, I like that. Peter Duder. Peter Duder. <laughs> Peter, Duder. Peter Duder, I like it. <laughs> Ah, oh, that's excellent. Market, <laughs> mar, or, yeah, or market duder. That's also pretty good. Yeah, no, so I never got into the uh, Instagram and, uh, I know, like, I just latched on to Twitter. Like, I mean, I've been on Twitter for a long time. Like, it's just the, uh, the bite-sized format of it and whatnot. Like, right. it's, something about that is good. And, and, like and Ye Yehuda, don't try too hard to give those out because we have to give them <laughs> out tomorrow, too. So just the people who are listening. <laughs> Now, just if they're sitting down, but if they're like walking around like, oh, I want stuff, well, you know, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're listening. <laughs> He's so then, so out in the hall throwing the magnets at people. So, so <laughs> how has it been? Because I actually never even look at our Twitter. Twitter yeah, feed. I mean, it's been, uh, it's been positive, yeah. I suppose. I mean, we've got 260-ish uh, followers. Hey. Which, so at least 200 people are listening to this podcast, okay. probably. At least, yeah. Uh, I don't know, only one famous person so far, so I mean, our... <laughs> Famous people listening, please follow us on Twitter. <laughs> yes. At Kyivecast. That's yes. why it's changed, right? Because we, yeah. we do like to change our name a lot. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yes, we've changed two or three times. And the deal is, I try to post the weird, obscure uh, stuff I just happened to randomly find on the internet. Right. <laughs> so, like, three or four hours of my work usually is devoted to looking up Star Wars on the internet. <laughs> yes. So, uh, I'm, I'm constantly trolling for weird... Weird tidbits. Now, the great thing is that this is the SWCA podcast, and yeah. so do we also have that as a... Oh, okay, yeah. You know, we've see, been, I'm, I'm not uh, we've been using the this. SCWA... Wait, S... <laughs> that's, that's what we call it now. Oh, I've been doing it wrong this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's SWCA, and uh, yeah, so if you search that, you'll find quite a bit of... Awesome. And now, I totally stuff. forget everything we've ever done. Have you ever answered the existential question you I have? did. Okay. Uh, but I hated my answer. Okay. Um, okay. So if you'd like to re-answer, you may, and then we're going to get the fantastic uh, to, uh, yeah, Peter Duder. Yeah, I think, okay, so here, I was thinking about this, and uh, a month or so ago, I grew a mustache. Okay. Yes. And, like, just kind of, I can't grow a good mustache, <laughs> so then, uh, so I thought, oh, man, okay, I'm Hoth, uh, Hoth Rebels. What is it? Rebel Commander? Commander? Hoth Rebel, Rebel yeah. Commander. Yeah, this is going to be Cliff awesome. Cliff Clavin. No, I had to shave. Look terrible. <laughs> had to shave it off. Hoth Rebel Soldier. Okay. All right. Yeah. Sounds good. We got good. two of those. That's Clean good. Clean shave it. All right. All right. <laughs> we, got, we got the little themes here. Yeah. All right. Give it up for the Tweeter right. Duder. Right. And now, all the way from somewhere in Minnesota, I believe, <laughs> Fantastic Pete, who we are trying to think. Okay, now, who thinks we should keep his name Fantastic Pete? Yeah, I think. Uh, <laughs> Who thinks we should change it to Market Pete? <laughs> Who thinks we should change it to Peter Duder? Yeah. <laughs> okay, it looks like you're staying with Fantastic Pete. So, how's it going, Pete? Oh, excellent, man. How are you doing? Doing well. Uh, unfortunately, we, we don't have Brisbane Brisbane Mike here. He, we have um, his, his ghost is standing it's right here. Yeah, <laughs> he's standing there smiling with no eyebrows. <laughs> um, I think I'm mixing up my Star Wars jokes. <laughs> I'm um, gonna do a cutout with his head on like a popsicle stick and have him come in, but I do a horrible last show. Okay. So <laughs> it, it just wasn't gonna work. Um, cool. And is, is is he being heard out there? Is his level good? Yeah, is your me okay? A, a little okay. bit. Okay. I'll I'll try and eat the mic a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So one nice thing is that you know we talk about why why come to conventions and why do it. There was this really funny moment last night where Peter was doing the door yes. for the Star Wars Collector's Archive man. party. Yeah. So in the event that you just walk by and you're like, who is that dude? That was the tweeter. I mean, not tweeter. That was Fantastic Pete. And he was sitting there. And so it was really funny because it was like when they figured out who you were, they're like, oh, you're that dude. But not everybody knew who you were. Um, so it's very good to have you. So you've been out there. You've been tasked with watching the market. So you just go because you, you, you did you, a lot you, of work. You were totally prepared. I think we just, yeah, go for yeah, it. One, <laughs> of the, one of the few things in life I've actually been prepared for. But <laughs> no, it was a crazy day yesterday. So this is actually my first celebration. Definitely used to the convention scene, Comic Cons, smaller Comic Cons, okay. things like that. Um, but this is just different on a whole different scale. Um, and I kind of liken it almost to when you go to a Comic Con and you can find the comic you want from like eight to ten different sellers. Same thing at a Star Wars convention when you're looking at buying anything Star Wars. If you want a 12-back, you're going to be able to find it in like 
10, 12 places easily. So it just blows my mind the amount of stuff that's out there. But a we, couple we, of we should say there's more vintage at this celebration than I've ever seen. I'd say, yeah. I mean, do, yeah. do you vintage collectors agree? Like, it, like every little every little booth has at least like four or five pieces. It used to be that you'd have to look and just be all Hasbro, but there's vintage. And not only that, there's like, like full booths oh, that just, I've never yeah. seen before. Right, we were right. walking over here and I'm like, well, what is this? And it turns out I think it was owned by a famous scammer, so I'm not going to say who it was. Ooh. But I was like, oh, this is crazy how many things are out there. So Yeah, it is ridiculous. And it's the breadth of everything that's out there, too. So I think a lot of people expect, you know, you're going to find a lot of Minon cards, um, some Jedi stuff, some Empire stuff, some 12 backs, and everything like that. But a lot of depth, a lot of breadth. Um, and when it comes to kind of the, the core things, you always should expect to see a little bit of a premium at a show like this. People mm -hmm. are paying for booth costs and things like that. But some of the kind of the staples of the hobby really have been probably more stable here than they have been on eBay. So <laughs> I kind of have like my uh, loose figure trinity, just kind of like you guys have the holy trinity of all the uh, collectors out there. So blue snag running on the floor anywhere from two to two fifty, which is pretty much for what the market does. Okay, so on two fifty for uh, for blue snaggle tooth okay. without a weird thing stuck in his neck, I assume. <laughs> <laughs> no dowels in the neck. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no gouges. And that and that's commensurate with eBay. Yeah, pretty yeah. considerate or consistent. Sorry, with with eBay. Um, yak face, same thing. About four hundred to four fifty for a yak face out here in line with eBay, and then del double telescoping Luke, anywhere from like seven to a thousand, depending on if you're getting it graded and things like that. So, those things were really consistent. Um, it was the twelve backs and then twelve inch figures that I've seen out there in a very very large quantity that have just been off the hook um, in terms of seeing you know a stormtrooper twelve back. Anywhere from like fifteen hundred to two thousand consistently man. for like a mid grade type of figure. Um, Wait, did everyone hear it? That was the first man. Oh, that man. was the first man of the episode. <laughs> 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 not on not on purpose either. <laughs> so fifteen hundred for for a star now just because there's some older collectors out there. Uh, in two thousand and three, what could you get a twelve back stormtrooper for? Okay, like Yehuda says one hundred dollars. Yeah. Okay. I see two hundred dollars. Okay. Something like that. About yeah. $100, yeah. dollars about, about 10 years ago. So uh, now around 2000 uh, Steve, I'm not too good at math. That's twice as much? <laughs> that's Just a that's little bit. A little, little more than that. It is literally 10 times as much. <laughs> okay. All right, cool. Get, keep Which, going. Yeah, and it's a great actual segue because on Sunday I'll be in here too at the uh, Collector's Lounge doing right, just right. a little panel on the economic state of the hobby, kind of talking about a little bit of what we do on the market watch, but then kind of of taking that backwards look and the stormtrooper is actually the one figure that we do a lot of focus on because over time there's been just steady appreciation and he is kind of that commodity for lack of a better term in the hobby so um come back and hear a little bit more about that sunday at one o'clock if you get a chance but you, I do you should call that like the blue chip report the blue chip or something like that yeah. you know what i mean because it's kind of like like you know you have to like like gm and coca-cola and ge those are kind of like the <laughs> stocks you kind of like watch is like blue chip stocks and that's how you can usually tell how the market's doing oh absolutely absolutely those are commodities are blue chips which well, is kind of funny 500 because <laughs> i do want to turn the market watch into like a little jim kramer like short every month <laughs> you start having too, buttons so. and oh, oh absolutely. man little sound you got to buy blue snaggle juice you got <laughs> oh, <laughs> no buy 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 sell 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 so yeah <laughs> these u grades are not going to sell in five years <laughs> get rid of them now fool <laughs> so so, I mean, that's some of the common stuff that you're going to see out there in, in, in quite a bit of quantity. But then I had a quick top fives for kind of the five coolest things I've seen. Okay. And I had to kind of group things together because when I say there's a lot of depth and very unique items here, I wasn't joking. Literally, if you wanted any prototypes, if you wanted a double telescoping product, anything like that, you're going to be able to find it at this event. So had to cut it down. Um, oh, do you want us to do it as a game? Oh, we could do. See who gets closer? <laughs> who here hates it when we turn the market watch into a game? <laughs> Everybody! Who's going to do it anyways? We are! <laughs> oh, okay, so, so tell us what the item is, and we'll see. If we get, but see, we've got to go quick, okay? Okay, okay so we're going to go into proofs really quick, and Proof, this okay. is just kind of what we're seeing the average prices for for mm -hmm. Return of the Jedi proofs out there. What okay. do you think um, common like secondary figures like Bosk, IG-88, Walrus Man are going for? Uh, on a Return of the Jedi proof, Okay, I'm gonna write down my number here. I'm not looking, Sky. Okay. I'm looking over here. I'm just okay, gonna say. Uh, five fifty. I said nine hundred dollars. 
Ooh, and Sky is much, much closer. We what? are seeing them go for over a thousand. No, twelve hundred for a lot of them. Twelve hundred for Return of the Jedi standard character proof. Which Very is, interesting. Which is crazy because as a Jedi collector, a few years ago I was picking them up for two, three hundred bucks pretty I, yeah, consistently. Yeah. So, which is also why I know a little bit about forty-eight back Sky, not oh, just yes. the market because. I, I collect a couple of them out there every once in a while. So Right. So we'll have to see if they sell and what they kind of sell for. And that's going to be another thing you're going to have to do for your market watch. Is it's one thing to say how much it costs. List, list price yeah. Versus, yeah. 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 We'll definitely circle back and see what they sell for here at okay. the end of the week if they sell. All right. So that's that's one point for, I forget who won that one. I, 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 yeah, we got okay. Sky with one point on. Yes, on and also right we now. have um, stickers that Steve made. I mean, you don't have to take a break for me to go on a side note here. <clears throat> These are the stickers that Steve made that they're just wonderful. <laughs> and they've got a picture of Chewie and a picture of the B-Wing pilot. I don't like how they made a different scale. <laughs> so I look way bigger than Steve. I'm, a, I'm, you know, I'm a little bigger than Steve. It's a little bit exaggerated. But Steve, can you tell the story about what Chewbacca figure this is? Yeah, okay, so we've talked about this years ago, but I used to have a Chewbacca engineering pilot that I picked up. It might have been at a celebration, maybe the one in LA, some, somewhere around there, and back when you were in Santa Barbara still, I think, yep. uh, you were just about to move, and I asked you if you were interested in it, because at that point, you weren't really doing the uh, the figure stuff. It was more the 2D. Right. And uh, I, I paid $150 for it and said, if you want $150 for it, it's yours. And uh, that was that, and I, yep. I was very happy to see it go to you. Um, but I still had a picture of it, because I was trying to find a way to represent both of our collections on a sticker. And I didn't want to just like take an image off of Rebel Scum or whatever, so I, I realized I had a picture of the engineering pilot, so I used that, and I used uh, a beaming pilot proto mold that I had uh, to represent us, because I thought that that's just pretty much what it is. But, yeah, uh, that, that just does a purpose. So it's just, it's actually, you know, the whole, remember the February episode where we talked about how we loved each other? It's kind of, <laughs> it's kind of got that there. And it's just so funny. Now, Fantastic Pete, uh, is it possible to buy engineering pilots for $150 these days? <laughs> I don't even want to know. Let me go grab my wallet. I'll take them off your hands real quick for you. <laughs> Uh, but no, that's very poetic, Steve. I like I like how you put those two together yeah. like that. That's great. And I did make it like obscenely off scale, just because I, I just felt like it was the right thing to do. Um, <laughs> and I will say this for the for the Facebook generation, NFS. That, that means not for sale. Turns out, turns out you have to put that on every picture you put up. Like I showed a picture of my kids in a Chewbacca shirt, and was like, "That's kind of nice. Are you selling it?" Yeah, so. <laughs> Uh, okay, so right, well, now moving on to, to part four. See, now that you're actually on the podcast, you have to learn what it's like to be interrupted by me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So so for number four, what we have is not one item, but I'm gonna, you guys can guess kind of the average of what these are. But somebody okay. out on the floor has a set of the second release figures from the Ewoks line. So oh, um, well, I actually the, know the, the answer to this. And, the and things like that, so... So I'm just going to go with kind of a rough estimate yeah, I, of what I'm I I'm going to recuse here. myself because I know. So why, why don't you just tell? Cause I, cause yeah, I, I, yeah, I, yeah. because yeah. I was even way off on these two because I had talked to him before he came out here. But 5000 and up. So for one of the cheaper ones, um, I'm horrible with per, their name. Per figure, 5000 and up. 5000 and up, basically. Right. Um, but a lot of those, to be quite honest, he's looking for closer to 7 for just because there's a couple that are more desirable than others, just right. like right. any other series. So. So that's that's the uh, un, unproduced droids and Ewoks. And ten years ago, what could you? How, how much do you have to spend to get an Ood? Fifteen hundred bucks. Um, okay, so from fifteen hundred to about five thousand. Not quite the same steep change. Okay, right. we're gonna call that one a tie. Guys, keep going. Yep. So then we have our old buddy from Brazil, Vlix. So okay. he did not. He's not selling for a dollar out there. <laughs> um, and there's actually one booth that has three of them, one non-graded and two graded, and we're going to go after the graded. So what would an AFA-80 Brazilian glass light Vlix go for? Oh, God, I have no idea. Uh, so it's loose. Okay, I've written down my answer. Steve? Uh, let's see. Let's go 6,500. Uh, I wrote 9,000. Um, you're just a little bit closer on Sky's side, so wow. about eight grand what? for a Vlix figure right now. <laughs> Sky is so smart. I just need to just S throw a C high number, and I might yeah. <laughs> have a chance of coming back. I don't know. <laughs> well, it's around eight thousand for okay, uh, a loose glass light Vlix. What did those sell for ten years ago? Five uh, thousand. All right. Oh, God, yeah. so, this is fun, like audience participation. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. I like that. People out there have some knowledge with this stuff, so. We're going to move right along. Um, so number two on the list um, of the top five, we have a 
grouping, and they are all the same price, of Power of the Four salesman samples. Oh, man. And some of them that were included in this, again, all the same price. You have the original Leia, you have Bosque, and you have FX7. Mm. Um, so what do you guys think an original salesman sample from that line is going to go for? Okay, so these were the ones that were actually shown at Toy Fair at Toy in Fair. New York by the Kenner employees. Right. They all ripped up on the back. A lot of them are unproduced. They're all unproduced figures. Right. Yep. Hand, uh, the bubbles were applied by hand. They're all, are they all one of a kind? Or maybe there's two there's of them? There's a couple kind of, of them. I've seen some doubles, because I know in the case of Bosque, there's actually a graded example out there. Right, so. okay. okay. But right. they're very low numbers. So I've written down my number, Steve. What okay. do you have for the salesman sample, Power of the Force, unproduced mock-ups? What do you think those go for? I'm going to go 10,000. And I wrote 15. You are spot on, Scott. What? 15 grand. Landslide victory. Wow. <laughs> like, well, now it's academic. <laughs> yeah. But let's just do the last one anyways. Yeah, okay. Yeah. You see, the problem the is no one wants me to win, except for me. <laughs> so it all works out. But what happens is if you're down at the end, you do a winner take all, and That's sometimes you've, you've snuck away with it. Yeah, but, but we're not going to do that this time. That's, That's not fine. fair. I'm, I've already <laughs> agreed I, I lost, but... Just for a good measure, let's listen. Okay, and the last so one. So the very last thing, the, the most expensive vintage item that I have been able to come across this entire time, and there's a lot of other items out there that are more common that are up there in that $10,000 plus range. But this was um, pretty crazy, and there's actually two, both the same price, kind of like with the Power of the Force samples. You have the uh, Bib Fortuna test run with a white cape uh, okay. on a Walrus Man Empire Strikes Back card. Or for the same price, you have a Han Solo trench coat prototype first shot on an Empire's Royal, or sorry, Emperor's Royal Guard card. Okay, now why, why do these exist? So these would exist, I think, in the case of Han Trenchcoat, this was actually just a test run. Um, Bib, this would have been a very early test run of it, so before the jacket even had color, before it had a staff. Mm -hmm. um, really unique looking piece, and surprisingly in extremely good condition. Okay. Um, card back is flawless, figure and bubble are flawless. So, so these are like the prototype figures on prototype card backs, yep. they're mismatched. They're really cool. There's always like weird things happening with Bib. So uh, I have written down my number. We're gonna see if I'm gonna shoot the moon this. this. <laughs> okay, Steve, what do you say? Uh, I'm gonna go 18.5. And I wrote 25K. Jesus. Oh, sorry, Sky. Um, <laughs> you're you're on the ball, man. 25 grand. Whoa! I'm just. What I'm, is I'm going on here? Yeah. <laughs> Wampa, wampa. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. So uh, you guys should come back because I want to hear um, your yeah. thing. So it's uh, when's yeah. your when's your panel here? So on Sunday at uh, one thirty, right at this table, okay. we'll be doing everything. So all right, great. Well, we Thanks, just got guys. to wrap it up, symbol. So I say thank you to Fantastic thank you guys. Pete. <laughs> All right, Steve. So we're going to be recording another episode. Episode number 62 will be tomorrow. tomorrow Where are we recording uh, it? The podcast stage right across the way at 4.30 p.m. So, so 4.30 p.m. It's going to have the archive super crew, you know, Ron, Gus, Duncan, uh, Duncan Hope, and us. So uh, come on by. Oh, and Steve is in first place in fantasy baseball. I had to Still? say He's really? currently in first place, yes. Wow. And uh, what was the thing, Steve? Wobba Wobba. Adios. All right. Star Wars figures, R2-D2, Chewbacca, Luke, and Princess Leia, they're the Star Wars early bird set of figures. These action figures are not yet available, but this Star Wars early bird certificate package is in stores with its colorful Star Wars picture display set and certificate.